How to love gain. That's right. Today, in this video, we're going to talk about how you can calculate your paycheck. Then we're going to talk and show you how you can actually increase your paycheck and go over the top three ways that you can uh, or what you should do with your money when you get your paycheck. All right. So let's jump right into this thing. Um, how do you calculate your paycheck? Well, I'm going to show you a really cool online paycheck calculator, and we're going to use the one from ADP. Now, ADP, you may or may not be familiar with, but they are the largest and probably the best known payroll processing company in the United States. And they've got some really good tools on their website. And so to start out with, we're going to run through using that tool so you can calculate your next paycheck. So, um, what we're going to do is we're going to go to adp.com and we're just going to pull this up really quick. And you can uh, write that down as a reference. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So you can see my screen now. Hopefully we've got ADP. It's adp.com. And right here we go. We're going to click on this resources tab and then we're going to click on tools and then over here on calculators. Pull this up and we're just going to scroll down here under payroll calculators. You can see they got a salary paycheck calculator or an hourly paycheck calculator. Actually, it doesn't matter. I think they're both the same. Just click on one of them and then uh, we're going to go and scroll down here. Gross to net calculator. So that's what we want to do. Let's figure out what your gross paycheck is going to be and then all the deductions that are going to hit it. So you know how much you're actually uh, going to get deposited into your bank account. So for our gross to net calculator, here's what we got to know right out the gate. How often are you paid? You can see in this drop down, we got options. We got weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, semi-monthly. So we're going to pick bi-weekly. And I think this is the most common method, uh, bi-weekly and on Fridays to get paid. So next up, you can see we got hourly and salary options. Um, I'm just going to put in hourly. Now, if you're working 40 hours a week on a bi-weekly schedule, that means we would put in here 80 hours, okay? And then click over and we'll put in just, um, let's say, let's put in $25 an hour. So about $1,000 a week, we got $2,000 a week. Now there's options here. If you have another job, you could add that. Um, if you regularly get overtime on your job, uh, you know, I hate to, count on it but if you're just you know wanting to say oh how much am i going to get i put in all this overtime this week here's how you can do it it's a really good way to do that overtime or double overtime overtime would be time and a half double overtime obviously two times so you can put in those hours and the uh, calculate the amount here uh, so if you were time and a half that'd be 37.50 and double time obviously 50 dollars. but so super simple so far right that's all we got to do and then put in the date that you're calculating this paycheck for uh, down below, there's some more details um, to help you calculate any of this. If you have any kind of questions, uh, it's really uh, clear and self-explanatory. Uh, but what we want to do next is make sure that the deductions are right because they change. Mm -hmm. So let's click on federal taxes. So here, use 2019 or earlier version of W4. Um, we're going to say no. We don't want to do that. We want to use the current one. Are you resident alien? Uh, most of you are probably not. So <laughs> we'll say no. Now, here's what's important. What is your filing status? Now, think about this. Uh, when you started work with your current employer, uh, part of the onboarding process was you had to fill out a W-4 form. Mm -hmm. uh, that's you telling the company kind of what your deductions are so they know how to set up your payroll properly. Well, if you've been at a job for a while and your life has changed, this W-4 that you originally submitted could be way outdated and you need to update it. But I want to just show you the difference some of this makes. Let's say we're going to stick with single uh, or married filing separately. Maybe you picked that for some reason. You didn't know and you just, that's what you picked. It's going to calculate um, your net paycheck differently. I'm not going to put anything else in here. We're just going to leave this as single. Now we're going to go click on state taxes. 
Now look at the difference here. Let's say you live in Connecticut. And we are just going to leave. It's, this option changes. Not every state will have this option. But it says, do you want to withhold at the default 6.99% rate? We're just going to say yes. So look at what happened over here. We had our regular biweekly paycheck of $2,000. We got federal income tax, Social Security, Medicare, state tax, and family leave totaling $470.42 of tax deductions. So your take-home pay is $1,529.58. Now that assumes that you have not signed up for any voluntary pre-tax supplemental health insurance. You know, like the AFLAC kind of scenario, those kind of supplemental health benefits come out pre-tax or that you haven't signed up for a 401k plan because that comes out pre-tax. If you have, Look, there's an option here. We can click on benefits and you can scroll down and pick what you want. Med medical, dental, vision, um, a flexible spending account for you or for a dependent or a health uh, savings account. You can put in that amount here per pay period to withdraw. Also, you could put in for a 401k. Now, let's say we put in 10% for a 401k and boom, it'll adjust right here. You can see benefits. We got uh, $200. Oh, it's per, yeah, $200 because per pay, 2000 gross, 10% is 200. So now our take home pay is 1367.56. Super easy and simple for you to figure out, right? Now, look at the difference it makes on where you live. 1367.56. What if you lived in Florida where they don't have any state income tax? Now your paycheck's 1503.38. That's a big difference, right? Like a huge difference. Um, so you want to make sure you got this right. Now let's go back. Well, actually, yeah, let's just leave it there. Now let's go back. What about now if we change this and instead of married or single and married filing separately, what if we change it to married filing jointly? Look at what happens to your take-home pay. From 1503.38 to 1573.00. So $70 roughly uh, twice, like bi-weekly. That's like $140 more a month just by changing that one mm -hmm. you know, box on your W-4 form. So we want to make sure that you're getting this thing figured out uh, correctly. Okay. Uh, let's go back here really quick. Uh, do, 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 do. Remove. All right. So we're, I think we're done with that. So we want to be, make sure that you update this thing so that you've got, um, whether you're single or now you're married, like that could have changed. How many kids you've got could have changed. Your 401k plan contribution amounts could have changed, but we got to get this done right. And uh, to set you up with your employer with your U4 form, it's super easy to do. And I want to show you how to do it. Oh, oh, I forgot to mention this. And this is so crazy. So some people, probably not you, but some people <laughs> will elect on their U4 or W4 form to actually have extra taxes withheld every pay period. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. Don't. OK. Do you overpay on purpose with anything else you buy? Do you like go to the car mechanic and he says, oh, it's going to be like a thousand dollars to like fix, you know, I'll replace all your tires. And you go, oh, that's OK. I'll pay you thirteen mm hundred. -hmm. No, that's craziness. Right. Mm -hmm. We don't do that. You don't overpay for anything anywhere. So why are you overpaying for taxes? Makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. So there is an, uh, a spot on the U4 form where you could put in like additional amount to withhold for pay period. <laughs> Cut that out. Don't do that. Especially if things are tight, keep all the money now. Mm -hmm. Stop overpaying on your taxes and keep the money every pay period right now to help you improve your financial success all year long. Okay. Now I want to get into the U4 form and show you what to do about how to change that. It's super easy. We can get it done in just a few seconds. But if you're not interested in that because you've already got it handled or whatever, don't leave. I want to encourage you to share this video with somebody else who needs to hear it. But 
in the next part, we're going to talk about uh, what you can do to increase your uh, take home pay and the first three things you should be doing when you get your paycheck. And it's going to be super helpful. Mm -hmm. So stick around and keep watching. OK, but increasing your paycheck should be a huge priority for everyone nowadays because of two main reasons. Number one is a lifestyle creep. Mm -hmm. Not that you're being creepy, but lifestyle creep, meaning your cost of living keeps expanding. It keeps getting more and more expensive because of the decisions you're making, the choices you make. And there's a law, it's called Parkinson's law. And Parkinson's law says that the as your income increases, your expenditures increase to match it plus a little bit more. So you actually are getting worse off. As you make more money, you actually spend more money and save less and less. Not a good law, and we gotta violate that one, right? We gotta fix and change that law. And um, I'm gonna show you uh, some current stats to support that. Uh, let's take a look here at some at some news of the amount of Americans who are living paycheck to paycheck. Look at this. This is new. This just came out. 64% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Ugh, that sucks. Been there, done that, and don't want to go back to it, okay? Thank you very much. Um, got the t-shirt, but no. Uh, and what's crazy it doesn't just affect um, people making $50,000 a year or less. Uh -uh. This same um, research was showing that high income earners, people that make $100,000 a year or more, are also living paycheck to paycheck. The percentage just went over 50%. Can you imagine uh, over half of Americans making over 100 grand a year are living paycheck to paycheck? That's unbelievable, right? Mm -hmm. It goes back to um, lifestyle creep mm -hmm. and it goes back to Parkinson's law. As your income goes up, your expenditures go right up with it, plus a little bit more. And so you are uh, in jeopardy. Like we gotta, we gotta face the music here and do something different. All right. So speaking of increasing your paychecks, uh, not only do we want to Let's see, stop that. Not only, okay, sorry, I'm back. Not only do we want to increase how much you get per paycheck, we, uh, but there's an opportunity for some of you to actually get more paychecks during the year. And uh, so that's exciting. So I want to share that really quick. Make sure you're clear on that and you can plan for it right now ahead of time, okay? So if you happen to be paid biweekly, which is the most common way that people are paid, that means in the course of the year, there's a couple of times where you get an extra paycheck a month. So biweekly is every two weeks. So normally in a month, you're going to get two paychecks. And so you really should kind of budget accordingly, right? But two times a year, you get a third paycheck. Mm -hmm. That's fun. That's like, I don't know what that's like. It's like winning. No, it's not winning. Nothing. You actually work for it. So, but it's super good. And I want you to plan for it. So here's how I'm going to break this down. Here's how you can plan. If your first paycheck in 2023 was on Friday, January 6th, then the months that you will get a third paycheck are going to be March, which is super awesome because that's next month, and then again in September. So you can start planning for that right now. Um, and we'll talk about that later, but um, have a, a plan for that money. Mm -hmm. But if your first paycheck, was the following week so friday the 13th are you superstitious no 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 but if you happen to be paid the first time on friday the 13th that means your third paycheck months are going to be june i think maybe summer vacation mm -hmm. and then december maybe christmas so that might come in really handy for you mm -hmm. but those are your extra paycheck months so uh, write that down and plan accordingly mm -hmm. okay but back to updating your W-4. I want to show you how to do that super quick. Uh, it, it really just is easy. So let's take a look here. I'm going to go to the government IRS portal first. 
they have a tax withholding estimator. You can see that right here. And uh, I'll share the link in the in the uh, description box below. So you've got it really quick um, to uh, to link onto it. But they've got a tax withholding estimator. This is the most detailed long way to do it. Um, and you're welcome to this. If you don't want that and you want the short way, just go up here to forms and instructions and click on form W4. And it'll take you to this. Um, share this tab instead. All right, here we go. So can you, I hope you can all see this. You should be able to. Yep, we're good. Okay. So um, this is super easy. So again, all you do is put in your name, address, put in your social security number over here. And then in, in section C, make sure you click the right box. If you were single before, or you were married filing separately before and you want to increase your take home pay every paycheck, click the different box if you've had that life change. If you got married, click it. Start saving some money. Um, the next steps, this is important. You only can fill this out if it applies to you, okay? But complete steps two through four only if they apply to you. Otherwise, skip and go right to step five. How easy is that? But read this. Uh, step two, if you have multiple jobs, um, A is reserved for the future, so don't worry about A. B, use the worksheet. C, you can read this. It's pretty self-explanatory. I don't want to go through that. But step three, claim independent and other credits. So multiply the number of qualifying children under age 17 by 2,000. How many kids do you have? Times 2,000. Put that number in here. If there's other dependents that are over that age, um, for various factors, you could take that and multiply it by 500 per one individual dependent and add that up and put the total over here. Step four, other income. You could, this is optional. You could include other income if you want to pay taxes on it through this payroll or not. Um, I'm leaning more towards the not, the deductions. And then here, this is the big one, extra withholding. Enter any additional tax you want withheld each pay period. And guys, I've seen well-meaning HR staff or well-meaning co-workers or whatever that will encourage you to overpay your taxes every paycheck. I think that's insanity. Don't do it. Put your money toward, especially if you've got debt or you don't have a savings account. Don't do that. Get all the money you can right away and put it to work for you. So make sure that's zero in that space, okay? And then all you do is sign and date and print that sucker off and take it into work and give it to your manager, HR department, whatever, and have them uh, fix it. And it'll be, it'll go into force right away. And so your next paycheck, you know, if you get it to them um, in time, uh, will, will be reflected. It'll start making the change right quick. All right. So that's awesome. Now, what else are we going to cover? We, so we covered how to update your U4. Make sure you do that. Don't overpay the government. All right. Now, the next thing, let's look at the first three things you should do with every paycheck. Mm -hmm. Now, you got those first three comments you want to do. share that with everybody? Number one, pay yourself. Pay yourself. Pay yourself. It will bring you peace of mind. Pay yourself. Right. And number two is... Pay all the bills that are due before your next paycheck. Okay. For more peace of mind. <laughs> We're big on peace of mind. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's just so important. Okay. And what's the third one? And the third one is to prioritize your money that's left to be spent in alignment with what you have already decided to do for yourself, your family, whatever your situation is. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's very important because it, you already decided, mm -hmm. so keep it in alignment. Um, following it's following through, which is very important. Right. I, I, okay. I think so thanks, honey. Uh -huh. So awesome. let me unpack that a little bit. So pay yourself first. This is a very uh, you've probably heard it before. It's a common rule. It's a financial rule. It's a principle. Pay yourself first. Mm -hmm. um, the best way to do that, and you've probably heard this. People refer to it as an emergency fund. Mm -hmm. No, nope, don't like that. Mm -hmm. Don't like that at all. 
I want to encourage you to establish a peace of mind account, right? But you can buy peace of mind. You can buy peace of mind by saving money, by having cash to handle whatever comes up. Okay. Um, there isn't much in life that's more valuable than your peace of mind. So buy all you can get. Okay. Now, I want to encourage you, and this is where we get, you know, specific. Okay. Pick a number and then pick a date. So if your lifestyle expenses um, cost $5,000 a month, then pick a number, pick somewhere between six months and 12 months of lifestyle expenses as a goal to have in cash. So if you pick the year, so 12 times five is $60,000, that would be in your peace of mind account. <sighs> Feel that peace of mind, knowing you got 60 grand, knowing you got a whole year that if everything hit the fan at the same time, you're good, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Ugh, you're good. You got time to recover. Mm -hmm. So now the goal is, all right, how quickly can you accumulate that? I'm telling you it'll change your life. How quickly can you get $60,000 uh, into your peace of mind account? Set a, set a date and get after it. Like, don't, you know... Don't play with this. This is serious. Get after it. Do what you got to do and challenge yourself to do it quicker. I mean, you've got stuff. I mean, there's a whole bunch of ways you can get there fast, and that's for another video. But pay yourself first. Make sure you're doing that. Um, before you pay anybody or buy anything, pay yourself first. Put that money away. Put as much into there as you possibly can. Um, I don't like the standard, you know, percentages. Oh, make sure you put 5% or make sure you put 10% or no, 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 no. Uh, we're not doing one size fits all here. This is right. your life and your game, right? So decide what's best for you and set those goals and then get after it. Um, now, once you've established your peace of mind account, then you can go on to the next thing, like an opportunity fund. But pay yourself first forever. The money that you get forever, put it, pay yourself first. Number two, Woo! more peace of mind by paying your bills in advance. Mm -hmm. You got a paycheck, look on your calendar and look at all the bills that are going to be due before your next paycheck and pay them now. Get them all out of the way and then find a way to live on what's left over. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, peace of mind is going to go through the roof. The stress is going to take a hike. It's okay. unbelievable. Number three, as you said, spend the rest of the money that's in alignment with your values, with okay. your passion, with your purpose. And you've already decided to do that. Yeah. So it's following through with what you decided to do. Yeah. And guys, this is so important yeah. because most people, we don't take the time to really think about this mm -hmm. at all. And we're like zombies or we're like... Um, uh, what do you call it? Sleepwalking with their money. We're just wandering around uh, with no direction. Uh, that doesn't work. We got to be meaningful specifics, not a wandering generality, right? Meaningful specific. Be intentional about how you're spending your money. And uh, so, for example, if you claim that your family is your top priority and the most important thing in your life, then show it in your checkbook. Like, let's see, how are you spending your money that prioritizes your family? You'll be shocked. A lot of you will be shocked that you're not spending your money in alignment with what you say is the number one biggest priority. Uh, so you can change things up and start feeling better about yourself. As you come into greater alignment, you reduce the friction in your life. And when you reduce friction, there's less stress. There's less tension. There's less uh, fighting or arguments over money. So I want to encourage you to do that. Now, in closing, I want you to think about this. Think about where all your money's gone. All the paychecks that you've received so far. Where's the money? Let's, yeah, ready? Let's say you've been working for 10 years and you've gotten on average $100,000 a year for 10 years. 
That means a million dollars has already flowed through your fingers. Now, how much have you got left to show for it? Ugh, right? For so many people uh, that are living paycheck, paycheck to paycheck, goose egg. There's nothing left to show for it except maybe some nice social media posts of their vacation or their new handbag or shoes or shopping spree or you know what i mean that's not going to cut it that's not financial peace that's not building financial success so how much have you made and how much have you got to show for it and if it's not good like we've got to change things we do not want to repeat right you don't want the next 10 years to be like the last 10 years you don't want another million dollars to flow through your hands and then have nothing to show for it either so Commit to changing your thinking, changing your beliefs, and changing your behaviors with money so that we can live a whole better life together, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Man, you can do this. Mm -hmm. You can change your life. And um, what's, what's the line I wrote down here? Oh, win your money game right? This is your money game. So I want to encourage you, you can win your money game, play your best with a financial success coach. Right. We are here to help. We want to encourage you. Woohoo! You can do it, motivate you, inspire you, give you the tools uh, to help you be more successful. So guys, if you like this, um, please give us a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Share it with your friends subscribe, and subscribe, share with friends. Yeah. And be on the lookout for the next video because we're going to keep them coming. And uh, a comment. We would love a comment. If you got some ideas on the next video or whatever we can help you with, let us know. But we're so excited to be part of this journey with you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much uh, for being here. Oh, honey. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's go. Let's do this. See you next time.